is yet. There it is yet. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Very pleased today to have Manfred Zupka. Let me get his initials. PhD, PE, Principal, ENV, SP, LEED, AP, CEM, and CEA. I'm in the environmental business. I don't even know what all of those mean. This is a highly, highly, highly educated young man. First came to Hawaii from Germany in, early, in the early 1980s. And for those of you who remember OTEC, he was instrumental in improving that system. And for those of you who remember Navitech, he was the designer. And he shifted from ocean-related activities to building energy efficiency. And his specialty now is Pacific Green Cooling and Comfort. That's the name of his latest business. And he's also the president of Sustainable Design and Consulting, LLC. There will be a quiz on this <laughs> later. Welcome to the show, Manfred. What we're going to talk about today is the work you're doing for the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Right. And if I remember correctly, last year they spent, I hope everybody is sitting down, $32 million on electricity. Just the Manoa campus. Does that sound about right? That's about right, yes. Yes, yes. And a huge, huge chunk of that is for air conditioning. Right. And you are working on bringing at least one building, as I understand it, to be naturally conditioned or passively mm -hmm. conditioned. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about human comfort right. and adaptive comfort. If our idea of comfortable in Hawaii is different from the idea of comfort, uh, say, for residents of Barrow, Alaska, where if they get up into the 50s, they're, they're having a heat wave up there. One thing is comfortable for them. What's comfortable for them would be absolutely freezing for us and, and uh, vice versa. So, Manfred, why don't you uh, launch <coughs> a description of, of okay. what you're doing at, at UH? Right. Okay. Well, thank you first, you know, mm -hmm. very much for, for having me here on the mm -hmm. show. It's been a really pleasure and, co and a privilege. I think you guys are doing a really fantastic job. Also, you, you have been with the state here, energy office. They're also doing really good, good work. And I think Hawaii needs it. Absolutely. So, and maybe the next, uh, so I actually right now will be presenting our usually either teach at the university or present. So you have to interrupt me and ask me if I'm <laughs> going too fast or you know, maybe doesn't, don't make uh, you know, a lot of sense. So the first thing actually would we say like the 2,000 uh, pound gorilla, you know, in, in uh, uh, our uh, uh, perception of, of energy is, is, is cooling. And uh, what you said already, Howard, that, uh, you know, this high uh, uh, cost for university, about 50, between 50 and 60 percent of that is mm -hmm. AC. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge chunk. So if we can actually reduce that, and on the right side of this, you know, uh, slide, you can actually see, you know, the clutterness which is going on, specifically in the developing countries, standard mm -hmm. of living going up. We have to cope with it. We have to cope with the increased demand on cooling. So next, next one, please. So with your permission, <coughs> we have done three, three parts of this uh, mm -hmm, presentation. Mm -hmm. So the first one will be actually give you an idea of, uh, uh, that is not coming totally through, uh, so what you actually supposed to see on there is uh, a, an, an image of uh, conventional air conditioning. And basically air conditioning, what it, it is in our uh, understanding is uh, circulating cold air through a building, through a room. And uh, there are actually three functions, and everybody knows that. This is uh, you know, a lot of air going through, so it has to cool us. And it has, has to ventilate the rooms, and it also has to dehumidi dehumidify the room. And, but the purpose of HVAC is really to provide comfortable, you know, interior environment. It's not just to having a gadget or a machine there. So that's actually the primary uh, focus, and a lot of times people don't really see it. So if you have the next one, please. Oh, this one comes through. Great. So when we look actually, and the and the really the, the person here, which we or the the function of it all is to keep us comfortable and the occupants and. 
that's actually a, an, a, 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 a slide which actually shows us how you know, a, a thermal equilibrium for a person actually he, uh, uh, works. One is actually we are gaining heat from the outside. And uh, you cannot see right now the, the slide, I mean the, the arrows, so we gain heat from the outside. We have to give off heat to the, uh, to the outside, and we actually heat, we are producing heat from the inside. And how it works that actually, you know, we have to keep the, 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 our body in, in, in some kind of equilibrium. And in, in heat, in, in a warm environment actually means we have to give up heat. If we don't, we actually what is called hypothermia, and that is can be really deadly. I mean, if the body is getting too hot. So in our tropical area, we always have to give up heat. And how do we do this? Next slide, please. <coughs> so there are actually, you know, four main, four main uh, 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 functions of of how we actually get rid of heat. And one actually, which is called sensible heat, and sensible heat is something which you can sense. Therefore, it's the name. So you you gra grab at the table, or so it's cold. And if you cool it down, then you, there's a difference in temperature. So and uh, there is something which is convection, which we are used to. Like there's a fan, you know, air going over our body, and conduction when we're sitting actually on a block of ice. There, you know, it is. And it's, uh, it's not really uh, very comfortable, but it's very effective. But the most effective is radiation. And it's nothing to do with nuclear or whatever. This is just you know, waves going against something which is colder, like, like surfaces. Well, let, let me interrupt briefly and say that I'm a former competitive runner. And especially in the marathon, the longest of all the runs, we just <coughs> had it uh, yesterday, some people would not be used to, especially to Hawaii's heat, and they would collapse and medical personnel would come around, this person has hyperthermia. Mm -hmm. And at the finish line, they would dash him into an ambulance. At the finish line, there was a big container with a lot of water and a lot of ice. Nice. And they would dunk that person into the ice water. Right. And it's very shocking, but they had to bring that person's temperature down very, very rapidly. And let's see, I think it was, the first casualty is maybe brain damage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, that's, what is that? That's a good uh, example of conduction, conducting yeah. the heat away in a very, right. very traumatic fashion. Yeah. 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 Very, very effective. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And the other one probably as marathon runner, you know, evaporation, that is actually that we have uh, water on our, uh, on our skin and then actually mm -hmm. it starts to evaporate. And it's also very helpful in, sometimes actually it's the only way for us to give up, uh, you mm -hmm. know, heat. Mm -hmm. So let's see the next one. Oh, you know, the slides are, so when we go through here, some are hidden. And you know, when we speak about comfort, there are actually six, six uh, 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 properties which we have, which actually determine you know, how we feel in terms of comfort. Four of them are actually environmental uh, properties. That means actually, it doesn't matter if Howard or I or whatever is in the room sits in the room and we feel the same. And that is actually air temperature and radiant temperature, which is together, which we call operative temperature. Don't, don't worry about all these terms. Air temperature, of course, it's the temperature of the air. And the radiant temperature is very important because that's the temperature of the seating, of the wall, whatever surrounds us. And that also helps to keep us cool. The next or, or it could keep us warm if there's ra warm. radiant heat. Yeah. Yes, especially yeah. right now if you see all these lights here. Then we have humidity, that means how much no. Can oh, oh. go back? Back slide. <coughs> Humidity, how much uh, water is in the air. You have, we have air speed, that is the, 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 the movement. And then, you know, there's the next ones are two uh, personal properties. So in the room, it doesn't matter how, how we are dressed. Oh, if you, for instance, have a sweater on, mm -hmm. you feel, feel warmer than I do because I have a light shirt. And we also have metabolic rate, meaning if we are sitting and, and at rest, it's less than if we are standing around right now, for instance, uh, you know, operating the cameras and filing or whatever. So these six properties determine our sensation of terms of comfort. Now let me uh, interrupt again and say that I used to be president of the board of my church, and we have an open air church. We just slide the doors and it's open air, and we have two rows and there are ceiling fans up there. And as the president of the board, I was the one who got the complaints and person A would come up, Howard, that chapel is too warm. Somebody else would come up, Howard, I'm freezing in that chapel. 
And I at one point proposed that never got implemented that we have two controls on the ceiling fans so the ceiling fans on this side could be going and the ceiling fans on this side could be still mm -hmm. and then people could choose. Right. So why do we have such a, a perceived de degree of, of comfort? So well, because how, uh, how that's a very good point, mm -hmm. and that actually leads up to a very, <coughs> very uh, timely thing about controllability of your environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the thing is that how we how we experience comfort is a very subjective way of you know. Mm -hmm. so for one mm -hmm. person, you for instance, you are comfortable. For the other ones, not. And uh, you know, some kind of a rule in 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 comfort or in in building science is that. If everything is ideal, you have at least 5% people who are not satisfied. <laughs> so even you cannot do it better than yeah, this. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So that's basically, it's a good point, and we'll come to it later on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you can just go straight forward, right now we're speaking still about like the uh, 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 you know, uh, AC and how it works is like we have heat input from the environment which comes in. You know, either through the through the the envelope or just through hot air or just through the the windows, and we also have internal gain. That sometimes it's a lot. If you have a lot of people in a room, it's getting mm -hmm, hot mm -hmm. sometimes. Or if you have a refrigerator or a lot of lights, that is internal gain. And an air conditioning has to take all this heat, which is like you know inside of the the space, and has to get it out. So mm -hmm. that's the purpose of the AC. Now let me jump in again because you just touched on a subject near and dear to my heart namely lighting and the lights that are illuminating us where it's doing a very good job and i don't know about you but i feel zero radiant heat why these are leds yes. you can get the same amount of light onto the subject in this case us for just a fraction of mm -hmm. the wattage mm -hmm. that was the case with the incandescents yeah that's and an excellent this is point. Just yes. uh, that's a beautiful way to reduce internal heat gain in in our environment yeah, now. Yeah. That's just absolutely. shift to LEDs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, sometimes it's funny. Even uh, you know, the new new buildings sometimes they have so much internal gain that even mm -hmm. in the winter they have to have air conditioning. Yeah. Even yeah. At, you know where in, you usually in have the, uh, the nor northern climates we have yeah. so many computers, so many uh, so much other electronic equipment. Yeah. 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 That's right. So maybe just the next one, and hopefully it just we go not too fast. What is like the conventional uh, approach of, of air conditioning? We have a very you know uh, uh, indoor climate we are totally controlling, and you know we actually what we also do is we want by definition we want to have the same thermal sensation everywhere in the in the in the, in the space. So doesn't matter where you are and sometimes of course it is wasteful because you don't have to supply all this condition in every corner because not everybody is always in these corners so that's actually what we want to do and the next one is and uh, next slide if we right now even with the old conventional you know what is really great to have something like an occupant uh, uh, comfort and where where we actually have a, a survey where we go in and similar to energy, you know, audit or so, we have an audit. How do we, how does the building feel? But it's not required, like, same like a, you, you are the champion here for the energy code. Comfort, actually, you don't have to uh, supply by code. But it's very important because, for instance, for an, an owner of a building, you want to have, you want to retain your occupants, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, and let me jump in with the codes there. It, uh, controls are becoming more and more and more integral to the code and we have lighting controls and now we have more and more AC controls where you can sense the temperature differences in different areas of the same building or on the same floor and the AC can react accordingly. Mm -hmm. So if you don't need a whole lot of cold air over here, the air conditioning can back off. It's a great, great way to save energy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely good. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's even like it's an old concept I think it's obsolete, mm -hmm. but you know it's always like how can you tweak a little bit more mm -hmm. of an old concept? Mm -hmm. But at one point or so, we'll see. You know, maybe we also go into the next you know step of of, of this kind of uh, conditioning technology, and maybe that's the next one. Is the you know the the original is like we have to be we are basically disconnected from the outside environment in a regular uh, AC. We just 
seal it all off, and we mm -hmm. just, this is indoor and this is outside. And then we maintain it and create the, the internal thing, you know, the, the climate with our uh, air conditioning. So there's another understanding right now where we have, like, we bring new and more environmental friendly approach. So that means we are opening up sometimes the, uh, we are opening up the, uh, the building and we experience something which is like the outside environment. Mm -hmm. So we are bringing elements in there. And uh, for instance, mm -hmm. if we have natural ventilation, that would, would take care of the cooling and also the ventilation perspective. Uh, absolutely, so. and I, I was born and raised here, and I was, I don't know how I survived, but I was, <coughs> as a kid, we had no AC. Right. And we did okay. How right. in the world did we do that? Well, yeah. that's true. And maybe <laughs> to the next one, which is right now coming, you know, and what is called an adaptive comfort model. Mm -hmm. And the adaptive comfort model is, uh, uh, sorry about the slide again, it's a little bit formatting thing. I think maybe my computer works differently. So we have three things. Usually right now, we're, the old one is like a static. You get it what you get. So everything is like internally, but you know what you said, we are trying to tweak it a little bit. So the, ne the next adaptive um, uh, comfort model is we have behavioral, psychological, and physiological elements there. So behavior, for instance, you know, we can choose whether or not we have uh, uh, like uh, um, you know, clothing which is not as thick. We have personal control over the environment, which is said about your fa ceiling fan in your church, right? Mm -hmm. And then psychologically, we have like expectation and thermal memory, which they call. Something I really like is, is uh, called thermal boredom. And that's actually something that we are experiencing, something we read uh, the body and the person likes variety. So, mm -hmm. and they always like a stimulus from the outside that actually brings them closer how he or she would like to be in terms of thermal uh, thing. Maybe just an example, if you are really hot mm -hmm. and if you enter a cool room mm -hmm. and it feels really good, because, you know, and after a while, after acclimation for about four or five minutes, you don't feel it anymore. Mm -hmm. And then you start to feel cold, cold again, yeah. right? And so you say, it, it, there was such a feeling of relief when you walked from that hot into that cold. Oh, God, thank yes, goodness yeah. for AC. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, oh, 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 a little yeah. cold here. And that's exactly. You, you know what? We have to take a break right now, but hold that thought, and we will get right back to it. Howard Wade, cold, cold. Not cold to green, cold to green. Be back in a moment. Aloha, I'm Carlos Juarez, host of Global Connections, and I want to invite you to come join us. We, we cover a range of global issues. We bring a lot of expert opinion, uh, a lot of issues, whether they're contemporary events happening in the world or maybe looking at things from a more historical perspective. Uh, global issues, very important for us to understand in this globally interconnected world. Join us here on Global Connections. Hi, I'm Stan, the Energy Man, Stan Osterman, and I'm here to tell you about my show on Friday, every Friday, on my lunch hour, 12 o'clock till 1 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about everything energy and anything you ever wanted to know about energy. So we're full of energy, and we'll see you here every Friday at noon to 1. Aloha. Good afternoon again, Howard Wake, Code Green. My honored guest today is Manfred Zopka, PhD, PE, Principal and Senior Consultant for Sustainable Design and Consulting. And we're talking today about Manfred's work with UH Manoa. And as we said, UH Manoa has an electricity bill last year of, I believe, $32 million. And about 60% of that was devoted to cooling building. So if we can get away from that and into more natural cooling by natural design and thermal adaptivity and so forth, so forth, we will be in much better shape, I would say, from a health perspective and certainly from a financial perspective. We all know the university needs more money. Mm -hmm. Why not take some of that money that's going to the utility and keep it in UH's pocket? Sounds yeah. good to me. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. This is very true. So uh, we must apologize here somehow for a formatting error. So we might actually not see all the images uh, which were supposed to be in there. So you have to bear with us for a little glitch. So next one, please. Oh, 
perfect. Yeah. Anyway, so we at the University of Hawaii, we were doing, in the last two years, we were sponsored by Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. And uh, we actually were sponsored to investigate how can we make natural, natural ventilation building better, more, more uh, uh, effi efficient. And if you see natural ventilation, this is, you know, the conventional natural ventilation, these are two sides of the coin, but there's something in between. So we are aware about, which is called mixed, mixed mode. But right now we're speaking about naturally ventilated spaces. And there are three parts. The first part, we actually used computer simulation to investigate wind movement around buildings. Now, Manfred, can you explain what's going on here with the deep blue and the lighter blue yes. and, and so okay. forth? Yeah. So the, the uh, colors mm -hmm. in the in the spaces, this is a scale. For instance, blue is very slow, very slow wind movement. Green is a little bit much. Red would be much more. Yellow is also more. So you go from red, yellow, green, light blue and dark blue. Dark blue is the, the, the slowest and red is the highest. And this one is in a simulation how the wind movement would go around a building in, in certain wind speeds and direction. We know, for instance, we have like trade winds, so we have some kind of a primary, you know, uh, primary wind direction where we can say, you know, this is like 75% of the year and so on. Mm -hmm. And it is important in a sense that we know the external wind because the external wind drives the, the uh, air through the building for natural mm -hmm. ventilation. Mm -hmm. So we jump to the second part of, of the uh, and this is the internal. So we first had the thing outside and this is the driving force, how much air is pushed through the building. And the second part is how does the air go through the building? So if you have, for instance, external like driving force, which is like a pressure differential, you have to see that you make it very effective and easy for air going through your, through your uh, building. It cannot have a lot of corners and small orifices. So this one actually we did in Keller Hall. Keller Hall is a really old building, but it's really good. It's very efficient, and we actually could, could show that it is very effectively done. So this one was the second part. So we had the first part and the second part. We right now understand and we can model and also verify with experimental data that we know how the air can be going effectively through the building because that's important. Now, what, what are these people doing in the sites here? Yeah. So right now we actually were running on the lower left one is we had this louvered section, you know, mm -hmm. and this one we are taping off because we wanted to see if we are closing these louvers, you know, what, how does it actually affect the wind flow? Yeah, so we yeah. were opening up, closing up internal, internal uh, 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 orifices. So that actually was it. So the results actually of the part number two was that, uh, you know, we came up and upper left one is see this was very good, uh, you know, for the, for the condition. CFD, computational fluid dynamic, is something you'd say garbage in, garbage out. So if you have to be experienced, that you can do something with the results, but it was pretty good. It was actually giving, giving us very good results. And the lower one, which you cannot see, is that we developed a tool where we, you could, uh, 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 you know, make a, a prediction. How often in the in the year do we have certain air movement? Mm -hmm. And that is called here is like a. Uh, you know, like air changes. Yeah, and and then, then are you referring to the fact that we have uh, the trade wind weather yes. most of the time and then we have the Kona weather? Exactly. Sometimes, yeah. So, and also how, how, is the, how is the building oriented? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. for instance, how do, do we have shapes in there? So these are all things which we have figured out. And also what we also saw that if it is not correctly oriented, we have some kind of big vortices around. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, air goes pushed from the south to the north and north to the south. So it's going back and forth. So in the new designs, we should actually look into this. So this brings us to the number three, that's a big part. So if we know that naturally ventilated space, we have enough airflow through it. A naturally ventilated space, we have like what it is. We don't change the temperature and we don't change the humidity. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to investigate, you know, how if we can simulate and verify afterwards that we, that we have a, a good comfort inside of these buildings. So the next one, please. And what we have then, we actually, uh, I think this, we actually did this uh, term comfort island. 
comfort item is what you actually suggested to, you know, in your church, you have mm -hmm. certain areas where you have mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. wind flow and the other ones don't have any. So we were looking for two approaches, technologies, which actually can provide, you know, localized uh, uh, comfort enhancement. And on the left side, uh, you see the ceiling fans. On the right side, we actually uh, made a prototype, I think that's the first in the world, mm -hmm. where we wanted to do a cooled cubicle walls. So this would be like cubicle walls where the walls are actively cooled. Wow, now how, how do you cool those walls? With some small, very small chillers. It's almost like yeah, an aquarium chiller. Mm -hmm. So that was the first one. But we don't dehumidify, so we don't cool the air, we don't uh, dehumidify, and that's the, the, bulk, the biggest uh, chunk of, of energy. So, so now, th this is an, an entirely <coughs> new ball game then, because it is. your normal AC, as you were saying, both dehumidifies right. and cools, yes. and there's a direct relation that you probably yeah. will talk about yeah. between the amount of humidity we feel yes. and, and our comfort range. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This, maybe, is, this is fascinating stuff here. So maybe one more actually, or no, two. The next one is we have like, I'm going, passing through this. On the left side, you see a CFD mannequin, right? And mannequin right now, they even have this uh, experimental mannequin. And what it does actually is, the body does not feel comfort as a whole body. The body actually parts a different sensation for, for comfort. Mm. So for instance, in warm weather, your head is the most important. The head actually is leading your comfort. If you have a big uh, 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 like head on or and you are feeling hot, well, it's better to take it off and sit under a fan. So you will actually uh, uh, feeling much better. So this is very innovative technolo technology and research and we actually learned a lot from that. And on the right side, we see our simulation where we actually simulated an, an air fan. So, if so, you so that would be a ceiling fan then? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And the ceiling fan is up to absolutely great. I know, Howard, you are a big fan of it, and you are very, very right doing it. It's mm -hmm. the most effective. So if you so, can... So this uh, relates, that they do a football analogy. They say with, with linemen, this is American football now, with linemen, when they're trying to stop the opposing defensive guy from coming and getting the quarterback, they say, control the head. Where the head goes, the rest of the body goes. Now the guy will fall down. Mm -hmm. And here with this analogy, as the head gets cooled, the rest of the body feels cool. Is is that? Well, actually, it's mean? it is like yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not necessary, but different body parts mm -hmm. are leading our comfort. So, for instance, our hands mm -hmm. and our feet in cold weather, mm -hmm. they actually they, they they are leading our discomfort. Yeah. And warmer yeah, yeah, weather yeah. is like our our head. Interesting, yeah. interesting. I've, I've often wondered about that, yeah, going mm -hmm. to cold weather and yeah. cold hands. Okay. So we had time. Yeah. Why don't you jump the next one here? This one is just how we did our experiments. was like a lot of hardware. And go to the next one, please. So that actually gives you on the left side, which you don't see, is like a ceiling fan, which we have. And the ceiling fan is like a, you know, a very interesting uh, name, actually, the ceiling fan the, uh, the, the manufacturer has. And this mm -hmm. is a very high tech. It's a very energy efficient uh, uh, fan. And on the right side is, you know, a very interesting, it's very important uh, uh, graph. And that actually was from yeah. ASHRAE 55. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on the lower axis, it says temperature rise in Fahrenheit. On the upper one, on the, on the Y axis, it's airspeed. Mm -hmm. And that means mm -hmm. the more airspeed you have, the bigger can you increase your temperature in the room and still feel good? So for mm -hmm. instance, in our case, we would have like at, at, at 200 something, 230 uh, foot per minute, we would actually have something like a six foot benefit we get. Six, six degree benefit. Six degree, sorry, yeah, six yeah, degree yeah. Uh, benefit. And again, like this is not in stone, there's a lot of research doing, mm -hmm, but there's mm -hmm. a clear correlation and that is very exciting because you could actually keep even a conditioned space at a much higher set point, internal air, mm -hmm. and uh, still feel, you know, cold. Absolutely, you know, and uh, I, have, I need to jump in with my energy code work, yes. which is, it covers this exact same ground, but we need to take a break. Code Green Howard Wig, back in a minute with one of the most fascinating topics known to man, at least for <laughs> Manfred and myself. Aloha, my name is Kali Lucas. 
I am the host of Hawaii is My Mainland here every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii at 3 p.m. I invite people who are doing interesting and inspiring things in our community to help us keep it local and keep it real. Tune in any Friday, 3 p.m. and also available on our YouTube channel and my blog, kawilucas.com. Hawaii is my mainland. Aloha. Aloha! How you doing? It's me, Angus McTech, wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on Think Tech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to seeing you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green. My esteemed guest today, Dr. Manfred Zapka. He has more initials in back of his name than I can even uh, comprehend. But we are talking about work that he's doing for the University of Hawaii at Manoa. And this has to do with natural cooling, natural comfort. And we think, yeah, we're comfortable, we're not comfortable. No, it's not that simple. Person A is comfortable, person B is not comfortable. And they are doing some really, really high-tech research on this. And at the moment, we're talking about the effect of ceiling fans. And I've been doing this personally in my energy code work. So why don't you t take us through again? This is, I think this is the most important slide in, in the whole uh, yes. presentation. Yeah. Yeah. And so on the left side, the empty frame, you don't miss anything. It's like a, 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 a ceiling fan. The ceiling fan, and I know you have, you have been really preaching that, Howard, this is a high tech. It's not something like you have with some blades, which are just, uh, you know, these are shaped and they are very extremely uh, energy efficient. So for instance, this one we don't see right now. It's a an, an, uh, high, high performance and it probably takes about 10 or 15 watts. If you get one you know, in, your, in your favorite home, uh, home improvement store, you get something between 80 and 100 watts it takes. So it's in terms of energy, it's amazingly. On the right side, again, we spoke about that. This means the following. We get a credit in terms of that we can keep the air temperature higher the more air we, uh, the, more, the, the faster the air is going past the body. That's air speed. So it's going past the body and has a cooling effect, right? And the nice thing actually also in the, in the air, in the, uh, it's not only the air speed, Howard, is what we call a turbulence. It's just in sm mm -hmm. small turbulence. And then with what we spoke about the boredom, that sometimes we feel hot and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden we have a rush, a lot of uh, air coming down, it's better than just blowing. Because sometimes, you know, it, it blows almost our papers away. And uh, so we cannot have it all the time. So sometimes when we're really warm, we get a big gush, but then afterwards it comes down to a shower. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, like our, our benefits of having like, you know, the, it's not, again, like you're absolutely right, this is a very important finding also of us. And it's also very cost effective. And uh, yeah, I've uh, seen one fan <coughs> from the same, I assume it's the same high-tech company, we can't uh, name it, but their room fan at low speeds consumes 1.2 watts. Yeah, yeah. just, just yeah. amazing. And again, it's, it's the, the high-tech version of a ceiling fan. You think, how can a ceiling fan be high-tech? Well, it can. It has to do with the yeah. design of the blades. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I read about is the improvements being made to jet engines. Right. And one of the improvements is the components of the internal workings itself. Mm -hmm. But the other is the design of the blades within the jet engine. And they're able to improve efficiency now by 20%. Oh, it's incredible. Same, yeah. It's and, incredible. And they're implying yeah. the same type of yeah. science yeah. 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 to ceiling fans of yes. all, all things. Yeah. And another thing is that the research that our consultant did with regard to the cooling effect or the sensible cooling effect of ceiling fans was he got a perceived temperature <coughs> drop of up to 12 degrees, which disagrees with this yeah. graph, well, which is from ASHRAE yeah. 55, yeah. I, I believe. Well, it could yeah. also be hard that, you know, this one is only what is called sensible. We don't want to go mm -hmm. into details, but that is only like, this does not include 
uh, uh, evaporation. So specifically, if it's getting warmer, you mm -hmm. evaporate more, and then you have a double effect. You not only have mm -hmm. cooling, but you also have more evaporation. And the more evaporation you have, more perspiration, the more you cool. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. maybe you know your your consultant actually had these two together. Yeah, it's also very. Yeah, this yeah, one yeah. actually, the graph we saw is only like sensible. It's like only without actually uh, evaporating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, I'll, I'll have to look into that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. New developments. Oh yeah, this is more fascinating stuff yeah. here. So maybe we just can go, and again, I apologize, some of, the, some of the formatting doesn't work. <laughs> right now we can speak about is, you know, I think, you know, and again, you are the, the big fan of that, we should have, you know, smart cooling here in Hawaii. Smart cooling is that you actually can, can have the same kind of effect on, on the comfort of in occupants for much less energy, which is mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. And again, like right now we have most of it, it's like, uh, you know, uh, all air, that means only blowing cold air. Mm -hmm. And we can tweak a little bit, mm -hmm, but we can mm -hmm. do much more. Mm -hmm. We can do much more of like using it intelligently. And there has been some green cooling initiatives, and we cannot right now show the, 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 uh, the slides. They're coming up. And they have like they want to promote also natural refrigerant, refrigerants, so we don't have mm -hmm. like the ozone layer depletion. We don't have like we want to maximize energy efficiency, and then also we want a fostering a sustainable approach to to private and commercial energy consumption, because we see that the international the the, uh, the global market for AC is basically exploding. Mm -hmm. Especially in mm -hmm. Asia, because you know people are getting, a, they want to have like a, a better life, better, better uh, internal and, and, and comfort, and, and better situation in the buildings. Yeah, th this has to do with the fact that uh, I'm not an economist, but there's more and more and more and more mon money on the face of this earth. Right, and a lot of that, especially, is going to China, where in the old Mao days, almost everybody was living in stark poverty. Now you've got hundreds of millions of Chinese that live in something resembling a, a middle-class lifestyle. And of course they want all the, the comforts of a middle-class lifestyle, yeah, I think including air conditioning. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. again, like we shouldn't forget, you know, that it's getting hotter on the planet. Yes, you know, yes. And right now we saw this year was miserable. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. we had El Nino, we're living down in, in Hawaii Kai. It was hot, Yes. hot and humid. And even natural energy, there, you know, natural ventilation might not work for this very hot weather mm -hmm. most of the year, but then sometimes it does not. Yeah. And then, you know, in order to, for people to buy into the concept of like green cooling, we mm -hmm. have to give mm -hmm. them something that they can actually buy into. Uh, absolutely, yeah. and not go out and buy air conditioners. You know, I, I was born and raised here, and I have never, never, never experienced weather like that mm -hmm. in, in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I go to some tropical environments and I experience that, mm -hmm. but never here. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading about the fact that every air conditioning unit going for retail in Hawaii was flying off the shelves. And when that stopped, then all the ceiling fans were flying off the shelves. That's right. People who never dreamed of needing artificial cooling, yeah. We're, yeah. we're buying it. So yeah, we absolutely need this, this yeah. smart cooling yeah. effect. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I would like to, to share with you what I think are two <coughs> really uh, very interesting technology, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. uh, avenues. One is what we call sorption, you know, cooling. And I have sorption. never heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, sorption is actually different and how it works right now with uh, our regular uh, 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 sorption cooling. Thank you very much. We have in the upper one, you see conventional mechanical cooling means we have to put electricity in there in order to make hot air into cool air. And then you just funnel it into the, ro into, into the space. Mm -hmm. If we really forget about natural ventilation or whatever, if we only see the old one, we have a seal, you know, this is, works the same way. But in the sorption cooling, we use heat to generate cold. Mm -hmm. So what it is actually, we have a, a process and you see the lower one, that you have a lot of heat energy and a little bit of electricity energy. Both are energies and both actually cool the hot air coming into the machine and going into the, into the uh, uh, space. And the heat could be come from different sources. One could be from a solar water heater, mm -hmm. or it could be what right now a generator where we have cogeneration. Especially mm -hmm. right now in Japan, also Asia, they start have, having up small units of naturally natural gas uh, fired generators. Mm -hmm. So they make a lot of heat, 
you cannot do anything with the heat. So you can actually use that heat in order to cool. Or for instance, you have something which, you know, like, with like district water, warm water. But that's totally counterintuitive. How can you use heat to make coal? Well, that's actually, yeah. that's the same premise because mm -hmm. the cold is generated by evaporating mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. In this mm -hmm. case, actually, we have only water. The adsorption is the most fascinating technology over there because uh, what they have, like you see in the lower one, you, it's, it's a little bit of a small gen uh, uh, refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And they seal this thing up f and they say for 30 years, you don't have to have any maintenance. So it's, mm -hmm. it's very good for, for residential you know, areas or ver residential houses. Usually in an absorption with a B, you needed some kind of a, a specialist to change you know, uh, uh, solutions and whatever. And this is actually a very interesting, and we should really look into this. This is a very, very interesting technology. I think we're getting to the close. I can share one more technology with you. And that's the next slide. Hopefully that comes through. And then, no, one further, please. We, we jump over that, because we have only one uh, more. So 20 we have 27? 27. Well, yeah, okay. So what you don't <laughs> see right now is it's called magnetic cooling. And magnetic cooling is really a disruptive, you know, positive disruptive technology. Because what we have is usually in, a, in either the sorption or the mechanical coolant is that we have, to, uh, that we have uh, you know, a working fluid which evaporates and therefore sucks out uh, a heat and then releases it on the other side. Because whenever you have seen like a refrigerator, it's only, only getting warm on the other side. It's mm -hmm. cold getting mm -hmm. inside. And the magnetic cooling does not have any kind of, of liquid fluids. What it does, it has a, a moving magnetic field. And the moving magnetic field works in conjunction with magnet uh, caloric uh, 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 metals. So it's actually a solid. So if they actually are rotating, they can uh, produce uh, 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 coolant. And it's a revolutionary technology. The first applications will be on the market in one or two years. And it has a lot of advantages out because it's much more energy efficient. Some mm -hmm. people claim like uh, twice as efficient, it's safer, quieter. We yeah. don't have any refrigerant which can actually deplete our mm -hmm. ocean uh, or ozone, ozone. Or, 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 or global uh, uh, greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. So that's actually something which we might you know, see in a couple of years. So there are a lot of technology like sorption, which is right now, it's, uh, it is proven. There's magnetic and probably the first magnetic will be in cars or small refrigerator because it's so small. You know, like uh, when you can show me right now here, the like a uh, like a one ton is like this big. Hmm. <laughs> Whereas with an air conditioner, it's uh, easily a foot by a foot, say something exactly. like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you're producing cold, I'm going back to the first law of physics. You also produce have heat. to produce a yeah, yes. an yeah. equal amount of heat. Yes. Yes. Where does that heat go then? Well, this one actually is only the heat pump. So you mm -hmm. have to pump it outside. This mm -hmm. is still the mm -hmm. same. And also in a regular refrigerator, it's also getting warm inside. Mm -hmm. you know? So the, the heat has to go out. Or for instance, like a, like a, 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 like an, uh, a chiller or so. Mm -hmm. So the only thing is the chiller, the, where you have all this working fluid, like a compressor, mm -hmm. and you have mm -hmm. expansion valve. This is replaced by this. So yeah. this is like the, the moving uh, the internal machine. Wow, this is real 21st century stuff and it gets right back to what Einstein used to talk about all the time, the electromagnetic <coughs> field and it, right. its potential. This is absolutely fascinating and let me, as long as we're going into the future, there's some work done at Stanford University, I hate to admit it because I'm a Cal graduate, yeah. but they have discovered a certain wavelength that transmits right back to the cool universe say heat that's striking a, uh, a roof mm -hmm. and if you create this exact elect er, yeah, electromagnetic field the heat will sort of be sucked right back up to the universe which is what minus 232 degrees or something it's pretty cool yeah and it's all completely passive so Amazing. we have yeah just an, an incredible future before us this is a uh, hugely, hugely exciting mm -hmm. time time to be alive here. So why don't you come back in a year or so when 
this has been uh, more fully developed. Do, do you think that any of this is going to get onto the UH campus at all in a pilot uh, stage? Well, this or, actually, yeah. you know, I think we were speaking to some of our sponsors and say they are interested mm -hmm. in it. Specifically, yeah, yeah. this actually you can buy it already. I mean, it's wow. and uh, the sorption, absorption, absorption. You know, right now in Europe, it's a hot topic because they also can, for instance, make their own electricity. What are you doing with the heat? Kaya Power Plant, for instance, we are just right now basically heating up the ocean. Mm -hmm. Only 35% of the oil which we are mm -hmm. paying for is converted to electricity. Yeah. All the 65% is heating up the ocean. And on that cheery note, we need to close. We just were really getting warmed up, <laughs> so to speak. So, Manfred Zapka, University of Hawaii, PhD, everything. Thank you so much. We'll be back again in two weeks. Howard Wig, Cold Green. Good evening. <laughs>